Okay, welcome to the closing beat, everybody. Happy, happy election Tuesday. How we doing out there? That lighting looking better too, right? I tried, man. I tried. Hey, uh, happy election day, right? I, mean, I hope you got out there, did your thing today. You got your vote in. Uh, doesn't matter who you picked. Uh, of course, we can still be friends. I, doesn't matter to me. You got to vote for who you believe in and all that good stuff. Uh, this is really a focus on the stock market performance for the day. We like to cover all the good stuff. We're going to cover the election because that's what's going to cause some volatility here. So we'll be taking a look at that as we go. Hopefully, I'll teach you something new, share some stats with you you've never seen before. As we like to do here at Jazz Wealth, we are financial advisors. Uh, and thank you all of you who've given us a shot. Uh, we manage your investments. We're an investment manager that likes to teach. We love to teach and get you guys smarter about your dough there. And so one way we'll do that here is right now with what we're talking about. Here's the stock market today. On the right hand side of your screen, you can actually see the uh, a nice little rally, right? We got a decent rally, but this is really interesting where the markets have finished for the day. I'm really excited about this. So uh, we're going to dive over and take a look and see what we got. We got the S&P 500 right here. Decent rally on the day. Who sold? Who sold ahead of the elections? I know one person, I almost know two people, uh, that decided to just go ahead and move to cash just in case. Here's what I want to point out. Um, I'm going to get a little bit geeky here for a second. We're just going to kind of highlight this. Where is the market, right? Over the last three months, where has the market been? Really nowhere, right? If I draw this line here, we'll just go straight, keep it nice and even, as straight as I can go. The stock market has been in a three-month range. A whole lot of nothing has happened for the last three months. You've had some excitement, you've had some scary times, you had a little bit more excitement and then you had a little bit more panic. So let's talk about this. Where are we now? We're right smack in the middle of the range, heading into what's supposed to be a volatile election and all this great stuff and believe whatever you want, but we're right back in the middle. Isn't it funny how the market said, we don't know, we don't, we don't want to be at highs, we don't think we need to be at lows, we'll go somewhere in the middle and see what happens there. So let's take a look at what happens. We did a bet in the office here, one of our bets was, uh, does the market, uh, will the market fall 5% or more from today's close through the rest of the week? It, will we have that kind of a sell-off? So let's just pretend it happens, right? If we fall 5%, what happens? We go from here, we go down 5%, where do we go back to? Basically the low of the range. And it, even to add to that, we gained 2% today. So if we lose 5%, where are we at? That's a net 3% loss, not a big deal, right? If we gain 5%, where do we go? Back to the highs, right? So the stock market very likely isn't going to move outside of a 5% range for the rest of the week. I guess anything is possible. But if it does, we really still have yet to make any progress. So all of you that are panicking or you know, you see, you're nervous about the outcome of the election, I don't blame you. There's a lot of hype out there, right? But if you're nervous about the outcome, play that scenario. What if we fall 5%? We've been there already, there's nothing to be scared of. If we go up 5%, we've been there already, there's nothing to be excited about. So the stock market's really just sitting there saying, just tell us who won, let's get this past us so we can move back on uh, with our lives there. Really, really interesting. Another interesting thing is gonna be, guess the Dow. Where do you think the Dow is gonna close next week, given the election? Whoever guesses close, uh, the closest next week really deserves the prize. It's a $100 gift card if you wanna take a shot. Uh, it's on our website, jazzwealth.com forward slash guess the Dow. Uh, no strings attached, no games being played there, just a fun back and forth with us and the viewers. If you win, we'll give you a hundred bucks. Our winner last week happened to be a customer. Our customers are allowed to play as well. John Solano was the winner there. He's one of the only two people not to go over. But now that we're back in the middle of that range, now all of a sudden you've got possibilities, right? So let's see where you guys stand there. I'm excited to uh, go with that there. Also, no show on Fridays. Bad news, because typically when I'm not here, the markets fall. I'm sorry. Last Friday, I was wrong. I was supposed. It, last Friday wasn't. I was supposed to be here. I thought it was that Friday. It's actually this Friday coming up. I'm. I'm so sorry about that. But, anyways, that's what you have going on in the S and P today. Right in the middle of a three percent. Uh, right in the middle of the range. It's so exciting, if you ask me, to see what's going to happen. I'll be up all night watching this thing here. Okay, so let's talk about something. Last week, here's what we did. Um, no, we're going to go to this one first. So we talked about having these large gap ups on a Monday, and I didn't share this with you yesterday, but this year when there's a large gap up on a Monday, let's say it happens next Monday again, uh, we typically pull back from that. So what I'm showing you here on the charts is uh, what happened, right? We look at all the other time periods over the year where the stock market gapped up 1%, we pulled back off that high. The time before that, we gapped up 2.36%. Uh, we pulled back a little bit off that high. 
Time before that, 1.3%, we pulled back off that high. So Monday gap hires of uh, 1% or more tend to pull back. That's something important to note going forward because if you see that, you don't fall for that excitement. Mondays are typically not the best day to invest if you're gonna invest on a weekly basis there. So I wanna point that out. Another thing I wanna point out, here is the Monday and Tuesday of election week. I shared this with you uh, over the weekend. I posted this uh, video, which came from our Notes from Jazz email. It's an email we send to our clients every single weekend or research members as well. What we did is we went through and said, the week before, how's the stock market perform? Well, we performed at the way outside the low end of that range. Monday and Tuesday, almost spot on. It ranks as the sixth best Monday and Tuesday performance of an election year. We covered every single one of them for you there. If you want to take a look, and it almost ties, if you look at 1984, almost ties perfectly. We gained 1.78%. Uh, in 1984, we gained 1.79% when Reagan got a second term there. So the stock market behaved pretty much in line with how it was supposed to. We pulled back a little bit more, which probably could be attributed to some of the gains there. Uh, but that's something interesting as well. Now, what we're going to take from this is what happens in the full election week, right? I had to tell somebody today who I, I take it as a guy that doesn't often get told no. Uh, it, very intimidating, I, I presume, from what I've known of him. Uh, Ted, to tell a customer, he said, if Biden wins, sell everything. And I said, no, I, I won't do that. <laughs> you gotta give me some stat. You gotta give me some reason to believe that. He said, if Biden wins, I'm gonna lose all my money. And I said, why? What's gonna happen? Tell me, talk to me. Tell, you know something, tell me. And uh, he said, no, no, I've been watching TV and this is what I found and this is what I believe. And I said, well, I'm sorry, I won't sell your positions. You're gonna have to move your account somewhere else and sell it over there. And I was nervous, you know, saying that because like I said, it's not a guy you say no to. Well, anyways, I have data to back up my side of the story. He has emotion. Those of you trading on emotion, you're out there, I know you are. You gotta ask yourself what good is gonna come from that. You have no data to back up what you feel about one side or the other, and that part doesn't matter to me. So what we're gonna do is take a look at the full week of election performance. What is the worst outcome we've ever seen? What's the best outcome? Here we go. So looking back to 2016, when Trump won uh, his, his first term, right? The markets for the full week were up 1.54%. You wouldn't believe that if you watch TV or if you're, uh, I don't know, if you, you, if you don't like Trump or something, you wouldn't believe that. You would assume that things went, were crazy, they were chaotic. I'll give you the fact that they were chaotic because overnight the Dow was down over 1,000 points. When you woke up and the markets opened up, it was no big deal, it was just a normal day, right? Expect the same tonight, no matter what happens, because it's change. Whether uh, Trump becomes, uh, continues to be the president or Biden, it's a significant moment in time. However, it has nothing to do with the long-term performance of the markets. You can see uh, Trump, 1.54%. That's Monday to Friday of the election week. Going back to the Obama era in here, uh, he has the second worst performance. Um, I don't know why, to be honest, but uh, you got minus 3.65% when he first won in the first week. That's a pretty good sell-off there. Uh, minus 2.6 when he lost or when he won the second term there. So a little bit of weakness there. As you go back, what's this big red guy right here? That's the one we're all looking at, right? That's what we all think is going to happen. Minus 4.6%. This is when we didn't know who won. Remember, this was Bush and Gore and old Florida down here. We had some issues with how we poked holes in ballots back then. Didn't quite work out. You know, we, we, we messed it up. We didn't know who won the election for weeks. And so the stock market throughout that week going, wait a minute, what's going on? We don't know who the president's going to be. We lost 4.62%. Now go back and take a look. Leading up to that, uh, the week before, there we go. So leading up to that 3.4%. So we lost 4% by the end of the week. Not a big deal, right? We see that on a you know, week to week basis, no matter what's going on. So ask yourself, what data do you have that tells you the stock market is in big trouble if Biden wins or Trump continues? What is it? Show it. Let me see it. You don't, there's nothing there. So please don't make emotional decisions based on your investments. You're only, uh, or based on the election, you're only going to mess yourself up because what happens? Let's say the stock market does nothing. I don't think that happens, but let's say the stock market does nothing. Then uh, we find out who wins the election and it starts creeping higher again. Well, now what? If you moved all to cash, we can just jump back in. If you had a taxable account and you had a large taxable gain that you just took, what are you gonna do, jump back in, wash off any of your losses? So there's a lot to think about there and I just, I really worry about a lot of people being emotional. I'm dead inside. My wife tells me that all the time. So I'm not responding to emotions or TV or whatever's coming out. I'm looking at the data. I wanna share that with you guys because that to me 
There's a lot going on there. Okay, uh, enough of my rant there. Let's go over to the Dow for the day. The Dow, also inside of this same sort of three-month uh, nothingness pattern, right? We're back smack in the middle. You could draw the same lines there of highs to lows and everything. We're in the middle, which means we need more information. We're going to get that information maybe tonight or, or whenever we know who wins the election. But for now, the, the market's saying we don't know what to do. We need more information whether we decide to go higher or lower. Some of the laggards today were J&J, &J, Johnson & Johnson. Uh, not a big deal, but one of the drags overall. And then you had energy pulling back a little bit after its pretty impressive run uh, lately over the last couple of days. So CVX was one of the weights on the Dow as well. One other thing I want to point out to you is the delinquency rate. Now, this is not my data. This is Black Knight's data. These guys are by far the best in tracking this data here. Mortgage delinquencies. A lot of people are looking for foreclosures or thinking that's the next shoe to drop in the stock market. Well, this data would essentially prove you wrong. Uh, over the last 30 days, those that are currently delinquent by one payment is nowhere near where we were during the virus, the peak of the virus there or the financial crisis, the light gray on the chart there, that is the financial crisis, 2008, 9, and 10. So we are very, very low. It's not good news, right? I mean, there's still a lot of people delinquent, but it's nowhere near any catastrophic point in time where the markets were deserved to sell off. Those that have missed two payments, this number's actually gone down. So those people that are two payments behind, even after stimulus is over, is going down. That's good news for uh, residential home builders and construction, things like that. I'll highlight that in a little bit. Now, those that are 90 days or further behind on their payments, in other words, would normally be in an active foreclosure state. They're, most states don't allow that and you can't do that right now. So they're sort of frozen in time. That number is impressive, right? But it's been there, it hasn't changed. It's actually down just a little bit, but it hasn't really changed. So that's the known, the markets already know that those people are likely to foreclose or continue to be behind and once they can be foreclosed on, will be. The number of active foreclosures has basically stayed flat because of the moratorium on foreclosures out there. And so there you go. The data in the real estate market right now is not bad. So no matter what happens, if you start to hear that in the news, there is the actual data to back up the fact that although it's not great, it's not as bad as we've seen when the markets were down 30% or even more. So there's no reason with this to believe that the stock markets are going to sell off. Um, and that's sort of an aside from the election there. But anyways, wanted to point that out. Hey, uh, a couple other things we're going to point out tomorrow. Got a really, really good video coming out, our FinTips video. Can you retire with $500,000? That's kind of on the low end of what a lot of people shoot for or want to go for. But if you're older and you like, this is all I got, I don't have enough more, more to save up, let me show you some tricks tomorrow on our FinTips video. How do we go about specifically modeling that for somebody? And then on Friday, we're going to talk about the old IRA deduction if you have a 401k at work. There's some fine print in the tax code there. I'm going to share that with you again. I've done a lot of videos on this, but I'm going to go real specific with you. Of course, subject to change depending on who becomes the president, but you've got that there for you. All right, we're going to try something different here today. Let's go to our sector breakdown. If you'll have me, I'm going to bump over here to this, a new tool we're working on in our research section here. This is every single sector for the day. Industrials were the best performing sector today. In fact, 10 of 11 of the sectors today posted a gain of about 1.5% or greater. Energy was the only weak spot on the day. If I go over to energy here, we'll take a quick look and see what's going on in energy. It was weak all day long. This attempt right here to go positive, it was right there. I mean, just hinting at it, couldn't get it done. On the top left, what you can see is who was the biggest drags relative to their weight in the sector? So I'll start with the obvious ones here, these two red dots that you see over here, ExxonMobil and Chevron. Um, so I, you can't see me, but as you go this way, that is more of a weight in the sector. What we then did is put it down here so you can see. Chevron and ExxonMobil make up about 50%, let's just say 45%, right? Uh, I'm gonna call it 50%, just to make it easy. 50% of the energy sector is made up of those two. Well, they were both down today, which you can see here below the uh, zero. The y-axis is the return. The x-axis is their weighting. So these two were the biggest drags. If you hover over it, Chevron, its weighting is, is the same. You see it there, 23.6, and it was down on the day. That was your big one of your biggest drags. ExxonMobil was the other biggest drag on the day. Can I sort it? Oh, we haven't got the sort feature yet. Still working on that. I see what we're doing. Okay, so its contribution today was a uh, almost a half a percent drag on the energy sector for the day, right? So keep that in mind. Also, Charlie, if you're paying attention, uh, two things, sort the contributions on uh, sector breakdown, and then uh, 
the energy quote, the change for the day, is showing positive. So it's giving you something else there. Uh, anyways, so these two were your biggest drags overall in a sector. You can see that ConocoPhillips, although it's not as big of a weight overall, it was down 3% on the day. So if we go over here, here's ConocoPhillips. It was uh, weighted about 4.4%, down 3%. That was the third biggest drag overall. So if you're looking for why the weakness was in there on the day, it's gonna be those three stocks in general. If I go back over to the sectors here, our best performer was industrials. So if we go and look uh, for industrials here, let's see what's going on. Industrials largely had a great day. You can see by our scatter plot up at the top, it was a broad rally, meaning almost every area of the industrial sector was higher. We find here that EXPD, uh, Expeditors Transportation Company, was your drag on the day, but not a big deal overall. It didn't really hurt anything. Everything else was higher uh, in general. Some of the airlines, uh, in, uh, had a better day overall. And some of the bigger weighted stocks like Honeywell and the rails actually did quite well. Uh, UPS actually had a really good day. And we're gonna work on this where we can actually click to see uh, through to the chart as well. Back to the sectors page there, uh, five day performance overall, utilities kicking butt. If you look at utilities over the last five days, let's take a look at the chart to see. You've got utilities just chilling up here at the top over the last five days, doing really, really well. And we just basically plotting them all on there. Uh, to kind of show you. What I wanted to do was just really quickly go through and show you uh, kind of what we're working on here by also showing you the returns uh, of what's going on, the performance overall. Uh, and so that's yeah, pretty cool, right? We'll be, uh, we'll be releasing this here. Oh, you can hit this guy and have all the sectors in there just to see. Throughout the day, we basically had every sector performing together besides energy. That's down here at the bottom looking nice and weak. And right at the end of the day, yeah, we pulled back just a little bit off those highs. That puts us right smack in the center of what we were talking about with the markets there overall. So really cool, uh, kind of a work in progress, but loving that sort of thing there. And we'll move over to the new highs for the day. We take a look at the new highs in the markets today. You had 22 of them. One that I want to point out that I thought was rather interesting, Colgate. We talked about this yesterday as being one that was hinting at breaking out. Today it broke out and did not stop. 3.6% gain on the day. So if you're following us yesterday, there you go. Good job on that one. I don't think that one's done, by the way. We'll see what happens. You got Aptiv in the mix as well. APTV is the ticker symbol breaking out over that range here today. Decent volume. I think if it weren't election day, maybe it would have been a little bit more exciting, but uh, okay there, not bad. Uh, you've got Davida. The old dialysis clinic there. So moving up to new highs, also very interesting breakout at those 52 week highs coming off of a higher low with decent volume as well. I give the volume a little bit of a pass today because a lot of people were just kind of sitting on the sidelines. Uh, Allergent was one of the other new highs. This one's been there frequently. We've talked about this quite a bit throughout the years. It continues to do well. And one stock, a company that I just find interesting here is Illinois Tool Works. It's kind of like the um, third child of uh, tools. Uh, you know, the craftsmen, things like that. You know, you get all the attention, Ryobi. Well, Illinois Tool Works is in there as well. Good, cheap, uh, cheaper tools uh, that you can find at Harbor Freight and things like that. That broke to new highs as well. They've been doing well, actually, quite well there. And they should be, you know, because of the housing data and everything that's going on there. All right, let's take a look at our watch list here for the day. Uh, go over to this guy so you can see what's going on. Here's what I want to show you. Um, construction spending. Uh, so I'm going to highlight this maybe in the research section, but construction spending uh, actually doing really, really well overall. In particular, it's residential construction, right? So what we did is we looked through to see residential construction spending in particular is uh, the only area of construction spending that actually ticked higher. So what I did is I put a list together to talk about some stocks that are in that space that could potentially uh, do well because of it. Floor and Decor is one of those. If you've ever been to one, uh, it's an addictive little store. I like going to that store. Uh, I just go crazy in there. But Floor and Decor, back above the 50-day moving average, very strong on that construction uh, money, uh, construction spending update there. Valuation, little high. So if you're looking through this area, it's at a 54 PE, a little bit uh, expensive, but attractive because of the growth that it's given you here this year. You would be kind of hoping that this pulls back, right? Something in the, the mid to high 60s would be more exciting there. Going over to Lumber Liquidators offers more growth this year, but it's also a lot cheaper compared to Floor and Decor on a fundamental basis. 
Um, very volatile. Keep that in mind. Lumber liquidators, very volatile. They've largely shaken off their whole uh, uh, fungi scam that they had a while back there with that Chinese uh, hardwood floor. So that's largely behind them. Performance looking much better and very strong this year overall. Wouldn't be right if we didn't talk about Home Depot and Lowe's for that fact. So they're both on the list there. Home Depot still trading 10 percentage points behind uh, Lowe's, which is very rare. So Lowe's uh, really coming out to fight there. You got Lowe's also performing well. Uh, analysts are still positive on both. Home sales are helping, but uh, home sales are also entering that slow time of year. You know, winter, all that stuff typically slows down. And that's probably why you're seeing a little bit of sideways consolidation there. These go on a watch list, hence being on our watch list list, <laughs> right? So there you go. Uh, you've got Hognanian Homes. Breaking a new 52-week highs today. Good, strong, uh, I believe it's the best performing uh, home builder in the sector there. So something to take a look at uh, in that space as well. I want to go over to Meritage Homes because this one's pulled back. These uh, is also one of the better, um, on a fundamental basis, one of the better performers. The stock price has recently pulled back there. You like that around the 200-day moving average. I think that's something uh, that you could take a look uh, at that as well. Uh, moving on to one last one here, you got Haverty's Furniture. These guys are on the, you know, if you have one by you, they're on the mid to high end. Uh, of furniture that they offer. A little bit pricey there, but um, it's what it is there. Um, good retailer uh, overall, and clearly people are willing to spend the money because if you look at the uh, spending on something like restoration hardware, I, that's ultra high end, right? They've done really well this year, and they've had a lot of positive things to say about people willing to spend a premium uh, for furniture. You could probably just go to Haverty's and get for like a quarter of the price, but that's still premium furniture, you know, things like that. So I uh, wanted to point that one out. Haverty's ticker symbol HVT, uh, if you're taking a look at that. And that is our watch list for the day. Hopefully you learned something. Um, I'll probably take the entire list. There's about 40 stocks. And maybe I'll put that on the research site so you can see the comparables and everything. Uh, so we've got that as well. All right, let's go over to stocks in the news and then uh, take your questions, see what you got. All right, in the news today, you got AMC basically making a beeline for the old zero dollar number there. Revenue is down 91% attendance. Poor guys, down 93%. You can't go to the movie theater, right? That's incredible. They had a thing, was it them? They had a thing here where they um, you could rent the whole theater for yourself for 200 bucks. Bring anybody you want, as long as you're staying distant and everything. You could have a private theater for $200. That's how bad it is in our area. All right, you got Mondelez, the uh, beautiful makers of Oreo there. Earnings, 2.5% uh, higher than expected. Revenue up 3.3%. Organic revenue was the focus. They're doing well. It's a bigger snack company, so uh, organic revenue is always going to be the focus, kind of like looking at Campbell's Soup or something like that. Uh, PayPal pulled back 4% on the day, 25% revenue growth, uh, looking good there. Earnings up 75% year over year. They did guide lower. That's going to be the problem there. Total payment volumes is a focus. Uh, it's got to be in there. Two, wow, $250 billion. That's a beat for the third quarter. So other than guiding lower, uh, looking pretty good for PayPal. You might like that discount. Carnival Cruise in the news there. They're going to extend their no sailing here in the U.S. till December 31st. So no Thanksgiving or Christmas cruises, it looks like. Royal Caribbean did the same thing. Stocks really didn't do a whole lot today. You got Twitter, uh, a couple things in the news for Twitter, but the big one, uh, up 6% on the day, they've authorized their uh, to start back their share repurchases overall. It's also been beaten down over the past couple days, so maybe a little bit of counter trend bouncing going on there. Alibaba down 8% on the day, the Chinese uh, uh, Amazon type company, uh, sort of. You got Alibaba down 8%, uh, the Ant Group, which Alibaba owns about a third, I think it's just over a third, um, is not going to be going public. It was going to be the largest IPO ever. Uh, there's some issues with financials there, so they're not going to be going public as planned, at least as of now. Uh, so got some regulatory issues there, and that's basically our stocks in the news. What else do I have for you? You got earnings coming up tomorrow. Uh, Hilton, Allstate, Expedia, Mercado Libre, Qcom, and Corvo. And if you're looking for dividends, the only one you're really ex-dividend today is Xylem. Uh, and that'll basically wrap that up there. I'll let the stream catch up here and take your questions and uh, see what we can do. Largely happy with the, I've been trying to improve the color here uh, on this a little bit. I think it could be a little bit better. Do something like that, you know. I don't know. I don't, I don't it's not my job. <laughs> I'm not very good at this stuff. Oh, okay. Here we go. Oreo cookies. Man, there's nothing wrong with Oreo cookies. Hey, you guys can talk politics all you like, but we're fighting. You're going to start talking about Oreo cookies. You know what I mean? That's, that's where I draw the line. Politics are what they are. Finances, okay. Oreos, you got something against Oreos? Man, you're on the wrong team. 
I love it. You bought some Alibaba on the pullback. You never buy after one day, just one day after a pullback. So you might find you be able to add a little bit more there. Um, how about those moves out of L3? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll, no, I mean, it, clearly. I mean, just across the board there, uh, looking good on those, especially over the last couple of days. Uh, strong, severe rallies. I don't, so here's the thing. I don't know that this continues. I, I wouldn't expect it to just continue, but you could probably have some confidence that you found the short-term low there. That type of V-shape reversal off of a low very, very rarely turns all the way around and falls. It can weather any uh, election type shock or anything that happens there. Very strong rally. Yep, I would agree with you on that one. I agree. Who does Dustin think is going to win the election? Well, we actually did a little fun game here in the office. It's on our, you can see the video we posted yesterday or the day before. Yesterday, right? Yeah, yesterday. Uh, where we had some prop bets. So we, we did number of electoral votes, popular votes. Uh, does the market fall? Do any of the popular, uh, the sort of states and questions flip? Um, uh, what we do? Did uh, Joe Jorgensen get over two and a half percent? And will the losing candidate concede before or after 2.30 a.m. So we're having fun with it here, you know? So uh, we'll see what happens. And the winner gets the belt, by the way. Check this out, man. I am so, I don't really, you know, care about much besides this belt. I really want to win this belt, man. Huh? Cody's currently the rightful owner of the belt, so I'm not allowed to touch it too much, but holy cow, man. I mean, is that not a prize? Or is that a prize there? I'll tell you, I'll tell you what. I'm just going to throw that thing on the ground. <laughs> I love it. Oh, Nicola. Uh, yeah, they've got some things to work on there. The stock hasn't really been in the news. Volume's been pretty low. Most people are pretty much moved on there. I would say NEO has gotten most of that volume uh, in the short term. Uh, NEO obviously hitting new highs today if you took a look. Steven, Dustin's a Florida battleground state. You ready for your state? We got it. We got it straight. Don't worry about it. Florida is going to be the last state anybody's talking about tonight. We, everybody's voting. It's very clean. Uh, you know, we, we, all of us are just saying, please don't mess this up. <laughs> Let it be some, go to Pennsylvania. Let it mess it up there. I love it. You got some Zoom there. So, all right. So the question is on Zoom media there. It's been pulling back all the way to the 50 day moving average. Um, you got it at 170. Good job. Uh, that's a nice price there. Drop from its high. You want to hold this long term? Should he have sold? Okay. So when you want to hold something long term, there's nothing wrong with trading around a position. That's the Wall Street term that they use. So if you had a, I don't know, a thousand shares, I'm just picking a number. If you have a thousand shares, it's doing well. You might always keep a core position of 500 shares or so, but you can buy, you can be in and out of the extra 500 shares. Some people don't believe in that. That's okay if you don't. But if you find yourself on a rocket ship like Zoom, it's very normal to say, I'm going to sell 200 shares at 400, 200 at 500, and, or whatever. And then as it pulls back, you go, hey, I got my core position. I'm happy with that. I'm not going to sell it. But I'm going to add back some of these shares now uh, after taking some profit. Very normal to do that. So that might be uh, something to take a look at. Yep. I love it. I love it. Um, Cool. Dustin, how much is it to have you as a financial advisor? Love the teaching sessions. Well, I love that you're watching there. Um, right on our homepage. Uh, we don't hide anything, actually. So it's right on our homepage. You've got to go just over halfway down. Uh, there's a breakdown. Depends on your account size. Smaller accounts, it basically comes out to $75 for the year. Uh, as you get larger, we charge less and less. So um, just depends on where you're at in your saving world there. But thank you for, for keeping us in mind. Yep. Should the loser, should the ultimate loser wear the a Halloween mask? I'm down. Cody? That's not be oh, Cody's in. <laughs> he says he's not going to lose, so that's fine. Charlie's in? I feel bad making you wrong mask. Oh, and Charlie thinks that Mama Jazz is going to be the loser. Mama Jazz, if you saw the video, was the outlier. She pretty much went against everything we did. So she she might be looking pretty good. You know, that, that could be a tough one there. Yep. Do you think Solar Edge can come back from the earnings drop there? Yep, so I do. I think uh, this is a great testament too to overextended stocks. Very normal. I mentioned this numerous times about solar stocks. We went through all the solar stocks to say, these are very extended, let them pull back. Sadly, these guys had earnings, so they did fall today uh, uh, based on the earnings, right? So a bigger gap down. This, think of it as a reset. Think of all the people that want to be involved in solar. Imagine a Biden win. If, if Biden wins, you got more support because of that. Um, I just think 
you know, that, I mean, that, that's more of a gift than anything else. So I, I agree with you on the uh, uh, solar edge there. The old hanging chads there. Yeah. Yeah. Take down Halloween props. I don't think we can. I, honestly, I think they're stuck. What we're going to do is like bunch them all up so it looks like snow and then just make it a Christmas sort of thing. <laughs> I like it. Oh, Mama Jazz is in the room. She's in there. She says, nope, you ain't taking me down. She heard it. That was Charlie. I didn't, I didn't say it. Yep. I love it, man. Mama Jazz is truly the mama. She, she's the mother of two out of three of us. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you got it. I love it there. Well, hey, uh, good luck tonight. I hope you enjoy whatever's going on. Just, you know, it's an election, right? So we'll be through this in no time here. But in the meantime, I'll be back tomorrow. We'll cover whatever happens, should we know who wins. Uh, we'll take a look at all the stats and everything like we have been uh, to see where the market plays out relative to what's going on there. Uh, be interesting to watch the futures market tonight uh, as things sort of unfold. And then depending on the winner, just see how the rest of the week goes. But uh, either way, life's going to go on. I will be here tomorrow. We'll do it all over again. And in the meantime, I thank you for watching and uh, hope you voted. Have a great election night. Uh, I might be a little tired tomorrow because I'm staying up. I'm watching this thing. Enjoy.